Hello everyone, today I'm going to be having a look at this Bissell Crosswave Cordless Wet and Dry Multi Surface Cleaner. This is basically a cordless version of the Bissell Crosswave. Now, at the time of making this video, this machine is subject to a product recall. So if you've got this machine or if you've just bought it, it's worth going on Bissell's website just to check if your machine is affected. I've had this a while and it's the first time I'm going to unbox it and I have a feeling that this machine is affected. There is some issue with the battery so you need to contact Bissell and they will arrange for a repair or replacement. I'm not sure what they do because I haven't gone through the procedure but there is an issue. So if you've got this particular model and I'll put the details below the exact model this is then it's advisable to go onto Bissell's website just to see if you need to do anything about it. So after I've made a mess and cleaned it up with this machine, I'll be contacting Bissell just to see if this machine is included in the recall. So without any further ado, I'm going to open this lithium iron 36 volt battery operated cleaner that uh, gives you, according to the box, almost 30 minutes of runtime. Here's everything out of the box. We get, of course, the main unit itself, the handle, which also incorporates the controls. This is the clean water solution bottle. So we top this up with hot water and solution. This is a little measuring jug. This clips on to the storage slash charging base and it will hold spare brush rollers. And it also gives you a little receptacle to pour clean water in for the machine to do its self-clean program. And I'll show you that later in the video. And usually we get a full-sized bottle of Bissell multi-surface solution. This is suitable for wood floor, area rugs, and tiled floor. Basically any hard floor that is moppable that you can wash with water should be okay to clean with a Bissell Crosswave. But check your floor's manufacturer's instructions before you use the Crosswave. All the floors I've used it on, as long as it's sealed, sealed laminate, lino, tiles, certain sealed wood floors, you should be okay to use the Crosswave because it doesn't put lots of water down onto the floor like using a traditional mop and bucket. This is the charging slash storage slash cleaning stand. So you actually store the machine on this base and it charges it up. Um, you can also clean the machine through using the supplied container here that just clips on the side. And I'll show you that, as I said, in action. And finally, we do get printed instructions with this, including a quick start guide. But there's a lot of pictures and very little text. So hopefully by the end of this video, if you're not someone who likes to read instruction books, you should know how to use your Bissell Crosswave cordless. The first thing we need to do is to insert the handle into the top of the machine. It goes with the buttons facing forward and fits into the hole here at the top. So just push the handle in and it's probably better if you have the machine flat. Just press down. It's a bit tricky. You will hear a click when it's in properly. If it's not in properly, you won't hear the click. If for any reason you need to pack the machine back up and want to remove the handle, you just get a blunt screwdriver and press this hole here and then you should be able to pull the handle off. But until you press that, the handle is pretty secure on the cleaner. This is the clean water container that you fill with Bissell solution and hot water up to a maximum of 60 degrees. If you're only cleaning a small area, you can fill it to this line here with water and top it up with formula up to this line. If you're doing a larger area, then this is the line you need to fill it to with water and then top it up with formula to the line here. So basically, you just have to remove the black cap, fill it with the required amount of water and solution, replace the cap, make sure you don't cross thread it, tighten it but don't over tighten it, and I like to give them a little bit of a shake just to make sure that the solution is thoroughly mixed with the water. Once you've got the solution in, it fits onto the back of the cleaner here. It's got some handy little recesses 
enabling you to hold on to it and then it just pushes down and click it into position. I'll be showing you this in action obviously in this video. Located on the top of the carry handle you'll find the battery status indicator. All three lights will illuminate when the battery has 70 to 100% charge. 69 to 40% charge, two lights will illuminate. At 39 to 10%, one light will illuminate. And at 9 to 1%, one light will illuminate but start to flash to remind you you need to charge the cleaner. This button here activates the self-cleaning feature that I'll be showing you in action later in the video. To switch on the Bissell Crosswave Cordless, you press Area Rug or Hard Floor. The cleaning solution is released when you press the blue trigger on the underside of the handle. The business end of the Bissell Crosswave includes the rotating roller which incorporates brushes and soft microfibers. To clean it out, you can just remove this front panel just by pulling up here and that can be rinsed under running water. You can also remove the roller. There's a little lever here that says pull and it comes out easily. And you can clean that in your sink using tap water. If you want to add a little bit of mild detergent, you can do. Just rinse it thoroughly and squeeze it out and leave it to dry. You can also make sure there's no blockages in the main area. This will become gunked up, a bit gungy, especially if you've got pets. So from time to time, it's a good idea to get a damp cloth or one of those surface wipes and give it a good wipe out to keep the machine operating efficiently. You can, of course, run the automatic cleaning program each time you use the Crosswave. But for a more thorough clean, the roller, as you can see, comes out easily and should pop in just as easily. Let's locate it at that end first. And then it just pushes in like so. And then the front panel, the squeegee panel, that just fits on. You'll see there are two holes here, either side of the brush roll. And there are two lugs on the clear head. You have to locate the lugs into the holes, push back and click it into position. This is the charging and storage stand for the Bissell Crosswave cordless and it has to be located fairly near a main socket. There's about a meter of mains cable here. If you don't need a meter of mains cable, if you've got it right next to a socket, you can actually store any surplus cable underneath here. There are two hooks provided, so you can just wrap around any surplus cable and then the rest of the cable either comes through this slot at this side here or this side, so it depends where your socket outlet is situated. So you just push it through and it will hold it into place so you don't have a lot of cable hanging around. You've just got the right amount of cable for your socket outlet. So as I said, this is where you store and charge the Crosswave. There is a charging port just on the top here and it incorporates a little flap that closes over the connection port when you're using the cleaner and automatically opens when you place the machine back on the charging base. This accessory fits onto the side of the charging base just here. It doesn't click into position, so you can remove it if you don't want it. But you do have the option of storing two further brush rollers or just drying out your existing roller in one of these two receptacles. And you've also got the spout here that enables you to pour water into the tray when you're using the self-cleaning function. The main advantage of the Bissell Crosswave and other similar hard floor cleaners is you're never putting dirty water back down onto your floor. It's always putting clean water and solution onto the floor, agitating it with the brush roll and sucking up the dirty water into the dirty water tank here. So to remove it for emptying, there's a little black button. Just press that, the tank comes out, remove the top and tip the debris out down an outside drain or loo, especially if you've got some larger particles in there. But there is a little sieve that should catch any larger items that you can just dispose of separately and then tip out the liquid from the tank. Obviously, if you've been picking up anything fairly gross, then give the tank a rinse after each use and leave it to air dry before putting it back into the machine. Once the tank is clean and dry, you can pop the top back on 
But before I do, I'll just show you the float valve here. That will rise up as the tank fills with dirty water and cut off the suction when it's full. You'll know the suction is being cut off, one, because it's not picking up any more liquid, and two, because the motor will sound a higher pitched tone to it. So when you hear that, you'll know to switch the machine off and empty the cleaner immediately. There's also a filter here that can be washed. That just pulls out. There's a mesh part and it's hinged. Give that a rinse, both the pleated part and the mesh part, shake it out and then leave it to air dry for around 24 hours before putting it back in your machine. You don't have to do that every time, but probably depending on use, at least once a fortnight, maybe once a month. Make sure you always reinsert the filter. Don't use the cleaner without the filter in place. Just fits into the top like that. Then we can pop the float valve assembly back in the tank and then put it back into the machine. Before I can use the Bissell Crosswave cordless for the first time, I'm going to charge it for the required four hours and then I'm going to take it downstairs and we'll give it a thorough demonstration. I'm in the kitchen now with a fully charged Bissell Crosswave cordless. I filled up the solution tank with the hot water and required amount of solution. I filled it right up to the top so I'm going to be cleaning a fairly large area. So in this part of the demo, I'll clean this kitchen floor. It looks clean. I'm not going to sweep it. There's no visible dirt. It looks very respectable, but it'd be interesting to see the dirty water in the tank after I've done this part of the demo. And then because a lot of you like to see an extreme mess test, I will be throwing a load of expired foodstuffs on the floor and we'll be seeing if the Bissell Crosswave can cope with an extreme amount of dirt. So without any further ado, I'm going to use the Crosswave on the kitchen floor and we'll have a look at the dirty water when I've finished. To use the machine, put your foot on the floor head and recline the handle back. And then we just have to switch on to hard floor or area rug. You can use the rug setting on a hard floor if you want to, if it's very heavily soiled. All that does is put more solution down onto the floor. But for this part of the demo, I'm going to use it on the hard floor setting. When you initially turn it on, it's a good idea to squeeze the trigger here for around 10 seconds before you start to push the machine backwards and forwards. This will help to make the roller wet enough to start using it because especially when it's brand new, the roller will be dry. So just to make sure it's thoroughly saturated with solution, just 10 seconds of squeezing the trigger. And then as you use the machine, you go slowly forward and back, releasing the solution as you need it. And then when you've cleaned a certain area, say a square meter, don't put the solution down, just go over the area again, but with suction only to make the floor as dry as it can be. Okay, without any further ado, Let's clean this clean looking kitchen floor.
Okie dokie, I've finished cleaning the kitchen floor and have to say this Bissell Crosswave Cordless leaves the floor wetter than some of the other floor washers I've tested. The last floor washer I demonstrated on this channel was the new Shark Hydrovac and that used less solution and it also left the floor a lot drier. I've got wet feet at the moment because I have been walking over the areas I've cleaned just to make the video. Normally, obviously, you would start at the farthest corner away from the door and work your way back so you're not walking back on the floor. But I've had to sit and wait for the floor to dry. And with the Shark Hydrovac, it was dry within a couple of minutes, really. So it took a while for it to dry. And the Bissell is a lot hungrier when it comes to using solution. I have used the whole bottle of solution, but I have cleaned the majority of this large kitchen floor. If I was using this, on a day-to-day -day basis, I probably wouldn't use so much solution. I just wanted to make sure the floor was thoroughly clean. Before we have a look at the solution, um, the dirty solution, and it does look pretty dirty, someone suggested in my last video to get a clean white cloth or kitchen roll and wipe it over some of the floor just to see if it really is clean. So I'm going to do that now. I've just moistened some kitchen roll with water only and we'll give it a rub and hopefully if this Bissell has done a good job we won't see any more dirt on this white kitchen towel right I think that's pretty good I don't know if there is a little bit of dirt on there it's hard to it's hard to tell really well that's the side I had on the floor let's try this side as well I'll just move back do a bit more really rub and scrub the old-fashioned way of cleaning on your hands and knees with a scrubbing brush we don't do we don't do old-fashioned cleaning on this channel I like my modern conveniences I haven't scrubbed a floor on my hands and knees since I don't know when. It's picked up a little bit of uh, whatever that is. But all in all, that is pretty clean. So, does a good job of cleaning, and let's have a look at the dirty water now. So remember, this floor didn't look very dirty at all. So let's have a look. Wow. A similar result to the Shark Hydrovac but as I said, the Shark Hydrovac, which is another cordless floor cleaner, you can check that video out on my channel if you want to. We had a similar result with that, and that was when I cleaned the floor, when it looked clean, the same as I'm doing in this video. So we can remove the top part of the container, and this is the float valve. It did actually rise up just as I'd finished to indicate that the container was full. And as you can see, that is a pretty typical result for a lot of the floor washers I've tested. But I will say, the Crosswave, this is certainly quieter than the mains powered Crosswave that I showed on my channel a while ago. But, as I said, it's more hungry with solution and it certainly leaves the floor wetter. You are going to have to wait a while for the floor to thoroughly dry before you can walk on it again. So it does have that downside. Okay, well, this is a lovely clean floor. As we saw, it's not gonna be clean for much longer because I'm gonna put down a load of expired foodstuffs, leave them to soak a bit, keep the dogs off because they'll have a field day eating it all up. So I'll have to remove the dogs from the kitchen. And uh, we'll try the crossword again on an extreme mess test.
What a mess. <laughs> it stinks. Now we did go through the cupboards and we found out of date products. So I'm not wasting food. <laughs> it's not very pleasant. Really strong smelling. I've got all sorts in here. There's pasta sauce, pesto, some spaghetti and egg, some milk, some fruit juice, some sort of mush in a pot. I don't know, some sort of ready meal. We had a bit more of that, shall we? Ooh. Oh, and I've got a very hungry looking dog watching with amusement or bemusement, wanting to come along and lick all this up. And I'm sure he would, but I didn't want to deal with <laughs> the other end of that dog if he does manage to get hold of this. So I'm going to have to get it vacuumed up or sucked up with a cross wave pretty quickly. There's big bits as well. We've got chickpeas and some uh, other beans in here too. Absolutely disgusting. Okie dokie, I'm gonna have to fill the crosswave back up with some fresh solution and uh, hope it's gonna clean all this mess. Oh dear, the Bissell Crosswave has turned itself off and I've got three red lights on the battery status indicator and there was plenty of charge in the battery. Um, oh dearie me, I'm going to have to try it again. I'm going to turn the machine on again and just see if it starts up. Not sure what's happened there. Uh, it doesn't really tell you the, in the instruction book. It's just very poor instructions for this machine. I'll have to go online to see what three red lights mean. But I'll, I'll turn on again and see if it's going to work, but I think in the meantime, oh, oh, what a mistake. I'm gonna empty this out because, yeah, it's nearly full anyway. I'll empty this though down the toilet and not down the sink. glance the Bissell Crosswave cordless seems to have done a pretty good job. It's cleaned everything up. I have given it the sniff test and it doesn't smell. So all in all that's pretty impressive. Well it would be pretty impressive if it wasn't for the snow ploughing. Many vacuum cleaners also suffer from the snow plough effect. That is larger particles being pushed in front of the nozzle and not sucked up into the vacuum, or in this case, not sucked up into the floor washer. Bissell were one of the first manufacturers to bring out floor washers of this type, i.e. with a rotating soft roller. But a lot of other manufacturers have brought out models and they seem to be better. I think the problem with the snow ploughing on this cross wave, there's no gap. So with some floor washers, they have an exposed area where the roller is and that means it can go over larger particles and pick them up. And this one, because it's pretty close, there's a squeegee at the front. So as you saw, it's basically just pushing the larger debris. Obviously this was an extreme example. You're not going to be cleaning up that sort of mess, but you might have mess with sort of bits of debris, you know, an eggshell, other particles, cereal, etc. 
and you'd hope that the floor washer would go over it and pick it up. But in the case of this cross wave, no, it's pushed a lot of the mess to the front of the nozzle because there's no way for it to go. It needs to be more open at the front. So yeah, not very good at larger particles, but for cleaning overall, it's pretty impressive. Unfortunately, the cross wave has literally run out of juice. Not solution, there's still solution left, but battery power. It was flashing red and then it stopped altogether. So obviously I need to charge this again. It's got most of it up eventually. There's still a few bits here and there and I will want to go over this floor again a few times with some fresh solution and a fully charged battery. So yeah, for a big mess test, certainly the Shark Hydrovac did a much better job than the Bissell Crosswave. In order for the self-clean feature to work, you have to keep your finger on the button for around 15 seconds. So let's have another look at the brush roll. The cover still needs a manual wipe over. You can see there's still bits on it. And the brush roll, although it looks a bit cleaner, it's still got some grubby marks. I might need some mild detergent on that. Wash that manually before putting it to dry in the included drying section, which just fits here. You've room for two brush rolls. The machine has been used for a very dirty mess test, so it is expected. If you're using this machine normally, the self-clean feature will be suffice for most people, but occasionally it's best to take the brush roll completely out and give it a thorough clean. Obviously, I will need to clean out the dirty water tank after such a messy demonstration. So, I'm going to empty out the rest of this water and then wash this in mild soapy water, give it a rinse and I'll leave it to air dry. This whole float valve assembly, again, that can be cleaned, rinsed off. And finally, the filter that just lifts out. Surprisingly though, the filter has remained fairly clean. That's not bad at all, but because I want to clean and sanitize this, after such a messy demonstration, I will be giving this a good rinse out and again leaving it open like this to air dry before putting it all back together and then the machine should be ready for its next use. So yes, there is some cleanup involved, but on a day-to-day -day basis, if you're just using this on a floor that looks fairly clean, as I showed you at the start of the demo, the maintenance isn't so bad. It's basically just tip the water out, rinse out the tank, run the self-clean cycle and occasionally wash the filter 
and manually wash the roller. If you're looking for a cordless floor washer, I think there are better machines available now on the market than this Bissell Crosswave cordless. This is an older model and it's possibly discontinued by now. And of course it has been the subject of a product recall. In fact, I've been in touch with Bissell, I've provided my details and I think they're going to be sending me a box to send the whole thing back to them and they will modify it. I think it's going to need a new battery pack or something needs to be changed anyway to prevent the problems. But I don't think I'll keep this machine myself. I have used better. The most recommended cordless floor washer at the moment, and I've recently made a video of it, is the Shark Hydrovac. It's lighter, it's quieter, it leaves the floor drier, and it's altogether a much better machine. So for cordless floor washing, at the time of making this video, I would look at the Shark model instead of the Bissell. If you want to see a full demonstration of the Shark, that video is up on my channel. But yes, I think the Bissell is one to avoid really. It's got too many downsides. And as I said, there are better machines on the market at the moment. If you've liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, please comment below and I'll see you all very soon for the next video. Thanks for watching and bye for now.